Hi, this is Laura Chappell, and I'm going to take you through the process of imaging a micro SD card for use on a Raspberry Pi 5 with a 64-bit operating system. The first step is to get the Raspberry Pi OS Imager software, and you can download that from raspberrypi.com forward slash software. Once you launch the Raspberry Pi Imager software, on the title bar you'll be able to see the version of the imager that you're currently running. You have three buttons on this main view. The first one on the left hand side is to choose the device. So I am imaging this micro SD card for use on a Raspberry Pi 5 device. So when I click that button I'll see the list of all the options available, the different Raspberry Pi devices, and I'm going to choose Raspberry Pi 5. Now I'm ready to choose the operating system. Clicking the button, choose OS, you could see that I am given an option to image this with a 64-bit operating system or a 32-bit operating system. I'm going to select the 64-bit operating system, but I want to call your attention to the release date and the fact that this operating system is already cached on my computer because I have been imaging other micro SD cards before this moment. The release date for this operating system that I'm going to image onto this micro SD card is May 13th, 2025. Today, when I'm recording this, I'm just almost into July of 2025. So there have been updates to the packages since this image was created. When I take this micro SD card over and plug it into my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to have to do some updates to the packages before I start working. And the Raspberry Pi system will prompt you within about the first 30 seconds. Once it has connectivity to the wireless network, it will go out and see if there are updates that need to be applied. So I'm going to choose the 64-bit operating system nicknamed Bookworm. Now I'm ready to select the storage. When I click this button, you'll notice that it's showing me two available drives. I have a Western Digital My Passport connected by USB to my system. I also have my micro SD 128 gigabyte drive. So I'm going to select the generic mass storage USB device here. Notice in the bottom right hand corner though, by default, this imager will exclude your system drives from this list. That's a setting you'll want to leave on. So I'll select the micro SD card and now I'm ready to move on. Clicking next, I'm prompted, would you like to apply OS customization settings? And I do want to do that, but this is a new instance of the Pi Imager that I've launched and I have to go in and edit these settings first. There are no customized settings yet. So I'll click the Edit Settings button and I want to set the host name. I'll set it to rpi01. I'm going to set the username and the password. There's username Laura and password 1234test, let's say. The next thing is to configure the wireless LAN. I'll check that one on set it up with the SSID and put in the password. This is the password for the wireless network. I'm also going to define the wireless LAN country and you can see this is just a country list here that you're going to need to scroll down. Then you get all the way down to US which is where I'm located. I'm on the west coast of the US as I am recording this. So I'm going to select US and the last setting in this area is going to be the locale setting. I'm going to check that one on. The time zone is correct. I'm in Seattle right now and then I am going to choose the keyboard layout because otherwise the default would be the UK keyboard layout and I want the US keyboard layout. So I'm going to select that one off of the list. There is one other thing you might be interested in doing as you're configuring your micro SD card and that is to enable secure shell. 
If you want to connect across the network into a terminal session on your Raspberry Pi, instead of running over to your Raspberry Pi terminal area, or you have a headless Raspberry Pi that doesn't have a monitor on it, you may want to enable Secure Shell. That is located under the Services tab up on the top of this window. So I'm going to click Enable Secure Shell. And that way from my workstation I can use something like PuTTY and connect across the network to the Raspberry Pi device. I don't need to set anything with the Options area, so I'm ready to click Save. The prompt comes up again and asks me if I would like to apply OS customization settings. I've edited the settings, that's done, and so now I'm ready to say yes. It's going to give me a final warning to say that based on the drive I selected, everything on that drive is going to be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? That is the correct drive setting, so I'm going to say yes. And now it begins the process of writing. After it finishes writing, it will go through a verification process, so it will take a little bit of time. Once the verification process completes, hopefully you'll get a pop-up window that says Write Successful. If you don't, if you see a pop-up that indicates that there are errors, it could be a chance that there's a problem with that micro SD card. I'd recommend that you get rid of that micro SD card and find another one to image. At this point, you can go ahead and remove the micro SD card from the reader and you're ready to go and plug it into the Raspberry Pi and move forward. If you want to image another micro SD card, just click continue and your settings are already saved in the Raspberry Pi imager so it will go much faster when you want to image another micro SD card at this point. So now you're ready for doing some labs.